Tonight, we will read the story of Brave, Merida's Wild Ride. It was a soggy, stormy afternoon. Merida sat in the stables, reading from an old book of Highland Tales. She and her horse, Angus, wanted to go for a ride. If only the weather would clear up. Look at this picture of a brownie, Merida said. The book says they are little goblins who cause mischief, unless you keep them well fed. Sounds like my brothers. Angus snorted, <coughs> shaking his head. With It was clear that he wanted nothing to do with magical creatures, especially after their last encounter. Even though Merida had been able to transform her mom back from a bear to a human, Merida had learned the magic was not to be taken lightly. Merida read on until the raindrops slowed and the clouds began to scatter. Come, lad, said Merida to Angus. The sun's breaking through. Let's go for a ride. They galloped across the bridge and down the hill. But just as they reached the woods, Merida saw a flash of gray dart through the trees. What was that? she cried. But Angus didn't want to follow it, whatever it was. Don't be a ninny, Merida chided him. I'm sure it's not a bear. But what was it? Merida guided Angus into the woods, keeping her eyes open for another glimpse of the creature. As they rode, Merida kept catching flashes of the animal. She urged Angus to go faster until they broke through the trees and into a clearing. There stood a magnificent grey horse. Its coat shimmered. Its mane was like fine silk. Breathless with excitement, Merida whispered to Angus, He's beautiful. Merida dismounted and approached the horse with a gentle smile. Come here, I won't hurt you. Suddenly, Angus blocked Merida's path. Angus, she called, don't be jealous, lad. This horse must be lost. We need to help him. Make sure he's safe. Merida cooed to the grey horse, and it responded with a soft whinny. See? Angus, he's friendly. Merida stroked the new horse's nose playfully. Now, I'll ride him back to the castle, and you'll follow close behind. All right, Angus. Merida had a spare bridle in Angus' back, but she decided not to use it. She didn't want to spook the horse with unfamiliar reins. Instead, Merida decided she could guide him with her hands wrapped in his mane. Angus gave a resigned snort as Merida swung up onto the grey horse back. But as soon as she mounted him, the horse reared wildly. Merida tried to calm the horse, but he started running faster and faster. The strange horse galloped until the field was far behind them. Soon the trees began to thin, and Merida gasped in horror. They were racing toward the edge of a cliff. Merida tried everything she could to get the horse to stop, but nothing worked. She realized her only choice was to leap from the horse's back. But when she moved to jump, her hands were stuck to the horse's mane. His hair wasn't sticky or knotted. Yet Merida could not free her hands. It was as if they were held there by magic. Merida tried to slide off the side of the horse, but nothing could free her hands from his mane. She thought she was out of options. Then suddenly, the runaway horse brushed against the trunk of a tree, trapped rainwater fell down around Merida. Effortlessly, one of her hands came loose, but Merida's other hand was still stuck. Merida did the only thing. 
she could think of. Angus, she cried. Help! Merida could only hope that her friend had heard her cry. Merida looked up at the sound of a penny. Angus galloped up next to them when he was carrying the spare bridle in his mouth. He must have pulled it from his back to help Merida. Angus tossed it through the air as they were nearing the cliff's edge. Merida caught it with her free hand and slipped it over the horse's head. As soon as the horse was bridled, Merida's trapped hand came free. With the reins, she turned the horse away from the steep drop off. Now that the horse had calmed down, Merida guided him to a safe path beside the sea. As they reached the shore, the horse finally slowed to a stop. Grateful, Merida jumped off. The stallion stood quietly. Merida looked in his eyes for an answer about what had caused the wild ride. It was clear to her that this was no ordinary horse. It must be a creature of magic. Merida removed the bridle and whispered quietly, What are you? But the horse did not reply. He simply moved his head softly as if he was nodding before galloping down the misty shoreline and into the water. Merida frowned as she watched him. As the horse raced deeper into the sea, he seemed to disappear into fog. Merida mounted Angus and returned home. She was glad that the strange horse had not harmed her, but she wanted an explanation for her wild ride. Back at the stable, Merida flipped through the book of Highlands Legends, looking for an answer, until she saw a picture of a very familiar horse. Look, she showed the book to Angus. It's a Kelpie. The book says, once a bridle is put on a Kelpie, the water horse will do your bidding. Angus snorted in disbelief. Don't worry, lad, Merida said. I won't be riding another one anytime soon. You're the only horse for me. Angus nuzzled his head against Merida's hand as if to reply that she was the only girl for him. The end.